Good afternoon, everyone. Today, the Adam Seminar has the great pleasure to welcome Professor Yong Zhang. Professor Zhang received his bachelor's and master's degree at Nanjing University in China, the former in chemistry and the latter in chemical engineering. He received his PhD in chemistry at Boston University with his work in heme proteins dynamics using molecular simulation and perturbation theory. Nowadays, he's an assistant researcher in, in, in chemical and biochemical and biomolecular engineering at University of Notre Dame in the United States. His research interest is mainly focused in the development and application of molecular simulation methodologies to provide molecular level understanding of properties that are ob observed at macroscopic level. His career has provided solid research in areas including theoretical and computational chemistry, statistical mechanics, classical simulation, and DFT simulation. Currently, his application areas focus on new energy storage devices, such as flow batteries, beyond lithium ion batteries and next generation molten salt nuclear reactors. So once again, welcome Professor Zhang. Thank you so much for being here and please feel free to start your presentation. Thank you so much for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, let me uh, share my slides first. So you can see my slides now? Sure, it's great. All right, thank you. It's really my pleasure uh, to be here and present our work. And today uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, water in solid electrolytes. So, uh, well, there are many studies on this topic already. I'm going to uh, try to use this one example, lithium TFSI aqueous solution and to show uh, what we understand so far based on our MD simulation, also experiment, uh, uh, experimental work from our collaborators. Uh, this work is uh, supported by uh, this uh, uh, big center called JCGER, Joint Center for Energy Storage Research. It's uh, supported by uh, the US Department of Energy so the goal of this project is to uh, design and build uh, next generation batteries, which can uh, be used for any uh, application. Uh, the idea here uh, we take is, uh, we call this a bottom up uh, strategy. So we really want to understand the fundamentals Then, based on that knowledge and that understanding, we can design a battery that uh, is uh, useful for the application. And here in this map, you can see uh, this project involves uh, many universities, uh, national labs, and uh, even companies. So it's really a, a group work to uh, try to understand uh, and try to design a better battery. Uh, I think one of the motivation uh, for this whole study is the well-known uh, global warming problem. Uh, I think uh, if you were here last week, uh, the speaker also uh, mentioned the, this uh, similar problem, global warming and uh, climate change. Uh, I just want to uh, briefly uh, uh, give a little bit of background, I guess. So uh, this uh, chart here shows the uh, CO2 emission over the past uh, 120 years. You can see this uh, crazy increase for the past 50, 60 years. And that's one of the main reasons for the global warming. And the chart on the right shows the contribution from each of the uh, economic sector. So CO2 definitely uh, is a big issue. Uh, and global warming is dangerous as we all know. So there are different ways we can target this uh, problem. Uh, the speaker last week, he, uh, she uh, gave one uh, direction. And uh, uh, this center I am a part of, uh, we are trying to uh, target from, from a different angle, I guess. So uh, one way I think uh, to solve this problem is use more of uh, sustainable energy, for example, uh, solar or wind. But then uh, this type of energy, they are clean, but they also have problems because they are not continuous. 
which means uh, we will need uh, storage to uh, uh, store this energy when we can make them and uh, we, so that we can use later. Uh, well, also there are different techniques uh, for the energy storage. Battery, I guess, is one of the popular uh, techniques. So here I only show two examples. On the left is uh, a lithium uh, ion battery based technique uh, released by GE a couple of years ago. On the right is a different uh, methodology. It's called a uh, flow uh, battery. And today uh, I'm going to focus on uh, lithium ion battery. Lithium ion battery was first uh, commercialized, I think, about 30 years ago. Since then, it has been really used in uh, all the field everywhere uh, from our daily life, like cell phone, laptop, uh, tablets, to uh, right now, uh, it's getting more and more popular for the cars. And also, it's starting to be used in an uh, even larger scale, like uh, uh, green energy and other uh, uh, applications. Lithium uh, batteries are great, but they also have a uh, disadvantage. Uh, One of the problem is uh, the safety issue. So I believe you have uh, read in the news uh, from time to time, uh, there's a fire or uh, explosion. When we consider uh, large scale storage uh, devices, so safety might be one of the most important factor. We don't want to see anything uh, like this. One of the reasons for this uh, fire and other uh, uh, this safety uh, problem, I think is related to the organic solvent used in these uh, lithium ion batteries. So to solve that, uh, a straightforward idea would be, uh, can we use some uh, solvent that is uh, inflammable? Uh, a straightforward answer would be, uh, how about water, for example? It will never uh, catch fire. But we all know from uh, uh, general chemistry, uh, water has a really uh, narrow electrochemical window. It's only 1.2, 1.3 volt. So that will limit the use of these uh, battery devices. So this is a problem. Until uh, a few years ago, uh, we have this paper from uh, Kang Xu and uh, Chen Sheng Wang's group. They introduced this concept of uh, water in salt electrolytes. So, well, first, what's water in salt? Uh, based on their definition, in this case, uh, the number or the weight or the volume of water in this mixture is uh, much uh, less than that of the salt. So in other words, it's more like this is a solution of uh, water in salt. Water here is a solute, and uh, the salt is uh, more like a solvent. So in this paper, they demonstrate that uh, they can uh, e uh, expand the uh, electrochemical window of pure water from 1.2 to up to three volts. And they also showed a, a, a battery, they can uh, cycling the uh, battery at 2.3 voltage. So it's quite an exciting study. Uh, the other concern uh, when people think about this uh, high, uh, highly concentrated electrolyte will be how about the uh, dynamic properties? Because usually when we have a high concentration of salts, that means uh, the viscosity will be really high, the dynamics will, uh, will, uh, will be very low. So that will uh, limit the, the uh, battery efficiency. However, for this system, they show, for example, the parent transference number is really high, up to uh, about 0 0.7 at high concentration. And that's much higher than many of other uh, organic solvent uh, electrolytes. So that's really good. But we really want to understand what's going on, what happens, why we have these uh, properties, right? So there are many studies uh, trying to understand this system already. Uh, for example, uh, Olive Borodin uh, was uh, two years after the first paper. They published the work uh, by combining uh, polarizable model simulation and some experimental techniques. So what they see in their simulation is uh, in this electrolyze, there's this so-called uh, water-rich domain and uh, TFSI-rich domain. So uh, the uh, species in the liquid phase 
from two kind of domain. And they believed a faster lithium uh, conduction in this uh, liquid is related to the uh, faster diffusion of lithium in the water rich domain. A few, uh, a few years later, a group from uh, South Korea, they did a classical MD simulation. Also, they did IR, IPIR study. So in their simulation, they see this kind of uh, water channel is quite a uh, large in size. Uh, for example, here is two nanometer. So they reached a, a similar conclusion that the faster dynamics of lithium is because uh, lithium can really move freely in this water rich domain of the water channel following a, a, a vehicular like uh, magnesium. However, two years later, from the same group, uh, the South Korean group, they published another uh, simulation work using a refined, uh, uh, supposedly better force field. In this simulation, they don't see any of uh, this water rich domain or water channel anymore. It's more or less a homogeneous system. So it's kind of uh, still a puzzling till now uh, what's the liquid structure and why lithium can uh, move so fast in this uh, liquid phase. So uh, we would like to uh, use uh, the techniques we have and try to see uh, if we can provide an answer. So this is a simulation setup. I'm not going to uh, go through all of these. I just want to uh, mention here, that's the ratio between water molecule and lithium, uh, which is also the salt. And here is the uh, terpensine molecule, in case you, uh, you don't know. So you can see here at low concentration, this is uh, one molecule. The water lithium ratio is about 55, 56. So it's really a dilute solution uh, of salt in water. But when we increase the salt concentration, for example, at high, uh, 20 molecule, we can see uh, water lithium uh, ratio is smaller than three. So here, if you consider this is a bulky uh, item, many items as 15. So it's really this uh, solution is dominated by the salt. Water become the minority here. So it's really a water in salt system. And uh, because uh, in uh, previous studies, uh, people see different picture, different structure using different uh, force field, different model. So in our simulation, we really want to be careful. We want to validate our uh, simulation as much as possible. So as always, as uh, you guys may know, we always uh, compare the calculated density first. So here's the comparison of calculated density uh, in solid line uh, compared to uh, experimental results. The worst case, we have a density off by 1.6%. Uh, so it's a really good uh, uh, result. Uh, well, first we want to understand the liquid structure. So one thing we calculated is uh, the uh, structure factor uh, related to X-ray scattering. So here we compare our simulation to experiments. The uh, red curves are from our calculation and uh, blue uh, experiments at different uh, concentrations uh, from low to high. So you can hear at all uh, concentrations, our calculation can uh, capture the experimental uh, behavior really well, especially at high concentration. This is a uh, 20 mobile. The experimental and uh, computational results almost overlap on each other. So it's uh, almost perfect. We can capture all these uh, detailed uh, feature very well. So uh, now let's focus on this uh, low Q reason a little bit, because that's related to the long range uh, ordering in the liquid phase. So in experiments, we can kind of see two features when we uh, change the concentration from low uh, to high. One feature is between uh, 0.4, 0.5, uh, one over uh, axiom. You can see a low concentration like the peak here. And this peak position shift to a higher Q value uh, with increasing concentration. Then at a very high concentration, this peak uh, disappear. The other feature is this uh, 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 signal here at about one over uh, at one one over extra. At low concentration, there's nothing. With increasing salt concentration, we start to see a peak, but the peak position doesn't really change. So we call them peak A and peak B here. 
So this is experiments. When we go to our simulation result, we see exactly the same thing. We have two features, they follow the same trend when we increase the salt concentration. So this give, uh, give us some com uh, confidence that our simulation can capture pretty well the liquid structure. So from our simulation, uh, we can uh, look into uh, more detail. For example, we can decompose the overall SQ into different contributions. So here I show you uh, in uh, black the total uh, structure factor, which was shown uh, in the last slide, that all the different contributions. So from this uh, decomposition, we can see uh, this purple line, uh, TFSI, TFSI contribution, follows the overall SOQ very well. For example, uh, at low Q, uh, low concentration, there's this one peak at low Q, and there's nothing at uh, one. With increasing concentration, this uh, first uh, signal, the intensity decreases, and the second peak starts to show up. Higher concentration, they are kind of equal uh, heights. Finally, at a uh, very high concentration, there's only one peak at uh, this uh, peak B position, or there's nothing here. But in addition to this TFSI, TFSI contribution, we can actually see another signal, which is negative, which uh, is this TFSI water contribution. So uh, it kind of uh, uh, follow the same trend, except that this is negative and that's positive. The other feature is kind of related is uh, this water water contribution. It's a smaller peak, but the trend is similar to TFSI, TFSI. There's a signal here, uh, still signal here. It's kind of moving, but uh, less uh, uh, significant uh, relative to TFSI, TFSI, I guess. So now uh, this tells us uh, there's some uh, more important uh, maybe a contribution to the overall SFQ. So it's always easier to uh, look at the real space. So we uh, check the uh, GFR between TFSI and TFSI and coordination numbers. So here we can see a peak here uh, at about six or seven axiom. The peak has decreased. But because the uh, average concentrations increase for TFSI, when we calculate the coordination number, the coordination number is actually increasing, which makes sense when we increase the salt concentration. The other way to look at this would be uh, to uh, calculate the coordination number between the sulfur and sulfur atoms. So that's the yellow uh, uh, atoms here showing the molecule. The, way, uh, the reason we uh, check sulfur-sulfur uh, coordination number is in IR, FIP, uh, FDIR, they can directly measure the uh, concentration of the uh, uh, sulfur uh, items. So when we compare this uh, coordination number between our simulation and FDIR, they agree to each other very well. I'm sorry that this plot has a different concentration uh, while uh, uh, units here. Uh, all other uh, plots are using uh, molar. This is molar. So five molar here is equivalent to 20 molar. You can see here at 20 uh, molar, each of the sulfur is coordinated by more than two sulfur from other TFSI. We didn't include the, uh, the uh, sulfur from the same molecule, which means at high concentration, all these TFS, uh, TFSI ions, they are coordinating or interacting with other TFSI. So uh, the other way to look at this is uh, this uh, what we call a cluster size uh, distribution. So here on the x axis, we uh, show the normalized TFSI uh, cluster size. So it's whatever uh, size it is, we normalize by the total number of TFSI in the whole box. And the y axis here is the integration of the probability of each size. So here we can see, uh, for example, at low concentration, uh, one molar, this curve increase and reach uh, the probability of one really, uh, really quick at very low uh, uh, the cluster size. This means at low concentration, TFSI exists in the liquid phase 
as a really like small cluster, monomer, dimer, or a small cluster. The picture is similar for a final model, but uh, it reached uh, one a little bit uh, uh, later, it means uh, we start to see a little bit bigger cluster sizes. Things totally changed at 10 uh, molel. We have about uh, here about 30% of KFSI. They still exist as a small cluster of monomer, dimer, all those things. Now we see a, a sharp increase here, which means 70% of KFSI are connected to each other. So this is like a, a huge, a big network of cluster. Then uh, at 20 molel, there's only a small number, uh, like a two or three percent of KFSI. They are uh, in a small cluster form. Then all the others, basically the whole uh, liquid is a big, a big network of KFSI. So this is really interesting. Uh, from this uh, conversion from uh, uh, isolated uh, site to this big network. Then the next question will be, what happens to water? Uh, we know that in pure water, and uh, usually a uh, uh, low concentration solution of water, water are connected to each other through hydrogen bonds. So here we show the uh, oxygen-oxygen uh, coordinate uh, uh, GFR and coordination number. There are a few uh, features here, I guess. This first peak, uh, the intensity change by position doesn't really change that much. And with increasing uh, salt concentration, we start to see a, a soldier of second peak here. And also this peak uh, in uh, low concentration of pure water decrease. And the overall coordination numbers are decreasing. So when we look into the, uh, the uh, structure in the liquid phase, uh, in pure water, we know uh, water forms this uh, kind of tetrahydro uh, uh, structure. Each water is coordinated by four waters. So uh, the distance uh, from the center uh, water to a, a coordinated water is about 2.8, which is this uh, first peak. And the distance between these two waters is about uh, around 5, 4.5 to uh, 5. So that's the second peak. Once you have lithium in the solution, uh, lithium can be uh, at the center of this uh, salvation environment. So we don't have this uh, 2.8 structure anymore. So this peak will decrease and we don't have this distance anymore. So uh, that will de uh, decrease as well. But we start to see a distance like this, like a, a three something uh, between three and 3.5 and that's this structure increasing. So that's why we see this kind of behavior in GFR. Uh, we can also uh, uh, define our water uh, based on their uh, coordination environment to the hydrogen. So here uh, we consider when the two hydrogens are uh, coordinated to other water, we call this 2W. If uh, they are both coordinated by uh, INL, we, get, uh, we call that 2A. So in between we have 1W, 1A. This definition, uh, we use this definition because again, uh, we can see uh, something similar in experiments. For example, in FDIR, each of these water, they have a different feature in, uh, in the uh, spectroscope, uh, spectrum. And from uh, uh, FDIR, we can derive the probability of each of these water. And we can do the calculation from our simulation. So here's the comparison. As you can see, the comparison is really good again. And also uh, we can see a low concentration water is uh, mainly the 2W water. So each water is solvated by other water. And high concentration, the 2W water is almost gone. We don't really see much. Instead, we have about half of the water, 50% is uh, 1A and the other half is uh, 1W1A. So, uh, well, because it's 50-50, uh, so that indicates water solvation environment is also quite complicated in the liquid phase. So here I show you the uh, coordination number between water and water and their probability. So you can see here in pure water of black and a low, low salt concentration case, the water uh, coordination number is four. Uh, 
on average. At higher uh, cell concentration, this peak shift to the left to a lower coordination number. So at 20 molyl, uh, the uh, most possible probability is uh, two coordination numbers. So if we consider coordination number four, uh, it's like a tetrahedron structure. So coordination number two will be more like a linear structure, a chain structure. So similarly to the TFSI uh, uh, cluster size uh, distribution, we also did the same for water. You can see here low concentration, is, uh, there's almost no uh, uh, isolated water as you uh, expect. So all the water are connected, big network. And uh, high concentration, we see uh, this slow increase of uh, 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 small water. And, uh, but basically, most of the water exists in uh, some size of cluster. They don't uh, connect to each other anymore. So we just mentioned tube size from an isol uh, isolated molecule to a big network with increasing salt concentration. And here is opposite from a network to small clusters. So we understand TFSI, now we understand water in the liquid phase. Uh, what's the salvation structure for lithium? So here's the uh, GFR coordination number between lithium and oxygen from TFSI and uh, oxygen from water. They all have a sharp peak at a relative short distance. The coordination number between lithium and TFSI increase. Low concentration, almost no TFSI which means uh, lithium TFSI at low concentration, they are almost fully dissociated. But high concentration, the coordination number uh, is about two. Uh, object trend for water, high concent uh, low concentration as uh, each lithium coordinated by four water, the high concentration about two. So high concentration lithium is really uh, shared by both uh, water and TFSI. Uh, well, this uh, team from uh, PNNL uh, National Lab, they uh, also studied the same system. They reported that uh, the pH values in this mixture decrease when the salt concentration increase. So they did some uh, DFT simulation based on uh, some uh, small snapshot from their simulation. They uh, suggest that configurations like these you have one water coordinated by two lithium, and the lithium can be coordinated by uh, either uh, water or TFSI. So for this water in the middle, the hydrogen is uh, the the hydrogen is really easy to be released, which will decrease the, uh, the pH. Well, in their simulation, they kind of see this uh, two domain picture. So they say this uh, kind of configuration exists in the TFSI rich domain. So they kind of explain this uh, pH behavior based on uh, their simulation result. But in our simulation, as I showed you, uh, we don't really see uh, TFSI rich domain actually. I will also uh, show that in a few slides. But in our simulation, when we check the lithium lithium too far, uh, we do see this first peak increasing when we uh, increase the salt concentration. And here's the coordination number uh, also increase. And this peak position is uh, between three and four axon. That's actually uh, consistent with this, uh, this type of uh, configuration. So we believe uh, the uh, liquid structure we have is, uh, well, at, at least it's not uh, contradictory to what they uh, see. So we didn't calculate pH or this kind of PKA directly. But we think our uh, uh, liquid structure is consistent with this. So uh, just to uh, summarize this liquid structure I uh, talked about so far, uh, a low concentration uh, here I highlight uh, the uh, TFSI and at the bottom plot I highlight the water. So uh, a low concentration TFSI is kind of isolated from uh, from other TFSI and also dissociated from uh, uh, lithium. And water form a big network, all the waters are connected to each other. At a high concentration limit, it's opted. All the TFSI are connected. Water becomes small cluster, 
in this big capsize uh, uh, frame. So one thing I want to clarify here, when we say a capsize network, this is different from uh, some other uh, 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 paper, they say a uh, capsize domain, because in our case, I think this is more homogeneous. This picture is, uh, I think it's similar to uh, when you think uh, uh, pure water, all the water molecules are connected to each other, but we cannot say a certain uh, part of the, the liquid water is a, a, a aggregate or it's a cluster or a domain. So it's a picture of uh, like that. And in between uh, the two limit concentrations, we'll see something uh, similar. We have a kind of network, a kind of network here, but uh, it's in between. So now I think we kind of understand the liquid structure. Uh, what happens to dynamics? As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, in experiments, they see this uh, really high uh, transparent number, apparent transparent number for lithium. And they uh, try to explain this behavior based on their liquid structure. So if we don't have a, a water rich domain, capacity rich domain, uh, how do we explain this? So we focus on the uh, dynamics and transport properties. So here's the uh, calculated uh, now we costly compared to experiments, uh, agreed very well, as you can see. And here's the calculated ionic conductivity. Uh, we calculated using uh, both uh, two methods. One is Nernst Einstein, which into the correlation between ions. The other is from uh, Nernst, uh, well, uh, Nernst Einstein without the correlation, and uh, Einstein relation consider the, uh, the correlation. Our uh, absolute value, the calculated value is higher than experiments, but we do have this, uh, the trend correctly uh, captured, like this peak position and final level and this overall shape of the, the uh, curve. When we uh, calculate this uh, so-called inverse given ratio, the ratio of the two uh, calculated uh, uh, conductivity, uh, this, uh, the, this ratio agree with experimental results very well, especially at high concentration. So for example, here high uh, 20 molar, the value is about, about 0.6, and we also have 0.6. So that means uh, con uh, considering uh, viscosity and conductivity so far, calculation is not that bad. And here shows the self-diffusion coefficient uh, also compared to uh, experimental results. Uh, here we can see low concentration, our uh, calculation, the red uh, point here, uh, a little bit uh, overestimate the diffusivity, but high concentration, this agreement is really good. So uh, we went back and check, uh, trying to figure out why uh, this, uh, we see this uh, concentration dependence. Later, we realized uh, this water model we use in our simulation, PCFW model. When they derived the model, uh, they did consider the diffusivity, uh, which uh, uh, agree with uh, experimental result perfectly. However, at that time, they didn't consider this uh, finite size uh, effect from the simulation. And that's corrected in our uh, calculation. So in their fitting of the model, uh, they use a really small uh, uh, box and they did, didn't consider uh, the final size effect, which will make their, uh, well, if we consider the cor uh, correction due to final size, this number should be higher. So I guess that's why we see a, a overestimation at low concentration when water dominates the uh, liquid but much better agreement at high concentration. But overall, I guess our calculation is uh, quite reliable to capture the uh, uh, dynamic properties. So here we calculate trans uh, apparent transparent number. Low concentration, we are uh, a little bit overestimated, but high concentration agreement is perfect. So now at least uh, based on our liquid structure, we can capture this behavior. So how do we explain uh, why this is happening with our uh, water rich domain? So one thing we calculate is this uh, normalized diffusivity. We normalize all the diffusivity to the uh, value at low concentration. So this way you can easily see uh, the, uh, the diffusivity of all species decrease, but the decrease is faster for kyoxide relative to lithium and water. 
so that the ratio of lithium to the sum of lithium and tympocyte increase at higher concentration. So this is really telling us that when we uh, increase the salt concentration in the liquid phase, uh, because we see this uh, big network uh, between uh, tympocyte ions, that slows down the uh, dynamics of tympocyte a lot. But lithium relatively still kind of free, so can move around a little bit easier. That's why we see this increase in the uh, apparent transfers number. So we don't really need this uh, two domain picture to explain the behavior. Then the next question will be, uh, in, the, in this two domain picture, they are kind of thinking, lithium is solvated by water and really easy to uh, conduct in the water rich domain uh, using this kind of uh, so-called uh, vehicular uh, magnesium. So what would be the uh, dynamics? What's the magnesium here in our picture? Uh, here I show you the resistance time between lithium and oxygen from tripside and lithium between water. Uh, you can see this is a picosecond, uh, it's, uh, several picosecond to, uh, depending on the concentration, up to 100 picosecond. We know the diffusivity of each species, and using this time, we can calculate the distance, the average distance of, of lithium can travel in the liquid phase during this resonance time. And that's shown here. The dashed line here is the average size of TFSI and water. So here we can compare the distance of lithium, uh, lithium can travel to the size of this coordinating uh, species. So for example, for TFSI, this distance is much shorter than the size of tripside. For water, it's about like a two, uh, a low concentration, two or three times of the size of water. High concentration is about the same. This information together tells us that lithium is not really moving together with its uh, solvation structure. Otherwise, we should see a much longer distance relative to the uh, coordinating species. Well, in this definition, when we calculate the uh, resonance time, we use this uh, so-called uh, continuous resonance time, which means once the interaction is broken, we do not consider this interaction anymore. Even this uh, uh, water or tripside comes back and re-coordinate with the lithium. We can also consider a uh, uh, intermittent resonance time, which will allow this reformation of interaction to be considered. In this case, the resonance has to be longer so that the distance the travels will be longer. But still for TFSI, it's much uh, shorter than the size of TFSI. And it will be like four times of the size of water. So it's like uh, uh, for TFSI, it's still not vehicular. And for water, it's kind of in between. So we think based on this uh, result, it's more like a Hawking's uh, magnesium for lithium to travel in the liquid phase. The other way to uh, study this is using this uh, distinct term of the one hole uh, one hole function. Here's the definition. As you can see here, uh, if time uh, t is zero, this equation is basically the too far. At the uh, different time, a later time, if there's a, a collective uh, interaction, uh, we are supposed to see a peak at, uh, at distance zero. And uh, it will peak at a certain time T star. And this T star uh, is uh, related to the uh, hydrogenity of this uh, given li uh, uh, liquid phase. So we did this analysis for our case. We can see the lithium water. There's a peak uh, at time zero, uh, kind of reproduce the GFR. Then at any later time, we, uh, we uh, consider up to two nanoseconds. We didn't see any feature at uh, distance zero. The same thing for uh, lithium tripside. So this analysis confirms that there's no uh, vehicular type of uh, conduction of lithium. Instead, it's more like a uh, 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 hopping motion. So I mentioned uh, hydrogenity here. So one way to directly calculate that is uh, using this non-Gaussian parameter. 
So here shows the result for uh, lithium, capsaicin, and water. Interestingly, capsaicin has lower, well, first, uh, for a homogeneous uh, liquid, we should see this uh, non Gaussian parameter decays to zero. So here is really interesting that capsaicin kind of has a lower value compared to uh, the other species. So the reason for that, we believe, is due to uh, the solvation structure again. So for lithium, for example, it's coordinated by both capsaicin and water at high concentration. As you can see from this uh, uh, purple line, high concentration, the probability of different uh, uh, coordination numbers, they are kind of, uh, uh, or it's a wide distribution, simply put. It's the same for lithium or uh, water coordinations. And then for water, same thing. We have, uh, as I show you, uh, there's 50% uh, of the water is 2A, the other 50% is 1W1A. Uh, so quite complicated uh, solution structure. On the other hand, for TFSI, they form this big network. So I guess somehow it's more homogeneous in terms of the sol local solution structure. Also, TFSI is much bigger uh, molecule. They also have to average up the, the local environment so that the local structure is more uh, uh, homogeneous so that we can see this difference here. So, uh, so far we have been focusing on, on uh, lithium dioxide uh, pure solution. And we understand the liquid phase structure, also the dynamics. Uh, well, while we focus on lithium, we are also thinking how to go beyond lithium. Lithium is good, but there's limitation. For example, if we want to increase the uh, energy density or want to lower the price, we may want to use a uh, divalent metal. So one thing, uh, one example people tried is uh, adding zinc into this lithium uh, capsaicin aqueous solution. So in this case, on top of the lithium capsaicin, they add one more level of zinc uh, capsaicin. They also show this uh, kind of uh, stably run uh, when they charge and discharge the battery. This is also interesting because usually when we use uh, uh, zinc aqueous electrolyze, water stability is a problem uh, because water become really active and will react to become hydrogen and oxygen. So we want to really uh, understand what happens here. So again, uh, these uh, groups and uh, all the body, they did some simulation at high temperature using their colorizable model. They show a low uh, concentration, uh, low lithium concentration. And here they are trying to uh, show the zinc coordination environment. Uh, I hope that's not too confusing. So low, concent low lithium concentration, zinc is co coordinated by uh, six water. High concentration, zinc is coordinated by only capsaicin. So that kind of makes sense because uh, there's no uh, water associated with zinc that will probably have to stabilize the uh, uh, water. But they did a simulation high temperature. We want to see what happens at low temperature, for example, uh, room temperature. So we also uh, did some simulation. Uh, let me see the time. I'll try to go a little bit faster here. So we uh, found two zinc models in the literature. So again, as we uh, always do, we calculate a whole bunch of uh, properties, try to compare which model is better, which is uh, more reliable. So that's the calculated uh, density. Both models agree to each other perfectly. That's the viscosity, same. Diffusivity, you don't really see difference. Structure factor using uh, both models, almost the same. However, when we calculate the zinc coordination environment, we got totally different results. Well, before we look at uh, zinc, uh, first this uh, green and red, they are the lithium uh, coordination numbers as a function of lithium uh, uh, concentration. They are very similar for both models and very similar to uh, the solution without zinc. That kind of makes sense because uh, least, uh, zinc is only one more of low concentration. Then for zinc, that's interesting here. So this, uh, the top, this purple line, is zinc coordinated by water. 
So in this zinc one model, uh, even at high concentration, high lithium pi concentration, which means we have a lot of pi here, but zinc is still coordinated by only water. In this uh, second model, we see a decreasing of water coordinated to uh, zinc. So if we include this uh, uh, picture from uh, Oleg and uh, his uh, co uh, collaborators, we have three models now. What's the correct answer? So now uh, we come back to our experimental uh, collaborators. In this uh, plot, we show the uh, signal due to this uh, SO2 stretching mode, uh, anti, -stretch, anti symmetric stretching mode from FPIR. So they can distinguish the uh, this uh, motion between freed uh, TFSI, freed from metal coordinating, and coordinated. So for lithium without zinc system, we did this comparison. Our simulation agreed with their uh, experiment pretty well. So now we want to use the same idea to see uh, in this lithium zinc nature what's the behavior. However, uh, in experiments, they cannot distinguish lithium and zinc. They are both metal, they can both coordinate to calcite. Uh, so instead, we uh, use only a zinc calcite vapor solution. There's no lithium in this case. And we uh, did the same calculations, same experiments, and compared both models. It turns out that this uh, first model uh, agreed with experimental results much better. The first model, if you remember, that gives us that uh, water coordinated by six water, even at high calcite concentration. So that's really interesting. Before I move on, I want to mention that uh, in this calculation, when we calculate this probability, uh, we realize we have to consider the second solvation shell between uh, zinc and oxygen. You can see here in this uh, GFR, this first peak is really sharp, well-defined. This second peak actually is also very sharp, well-defined structure. And we, uh, I didn't uh, put the slide, uh, the plot here, but we also calculate the resonance time between this uh, interaction. Even the second solvation shell, there's a very stable interaction. And uh, our collaborator, they also see a similar behavior for, uh, from uh, FTIR. So uh, this kind of behavior, the importance of the second solvation shell, I don't think that's very well documented in the literature. So uh, I want to mention that. So now based on our uh, uh, analysis, uh, we kind of uh, have this uh, six water coordinate by zinc picture. Then in previous uh, study, they suggest this structure. So which one is real? So uh, we did a uh, science experiments. So uh, well, I don't really understand this very well and I don't have time to explain too much detail. But basically here tells us that the zinc is coordinated by a very symmetric environment. But here both uh, configurations satisfy that, uh, uh, this condition. Then we also did uh, XFs and we fit both uh, configuration to uh, the, the, uh, the, this curve. And this big peak is the first solvation shell between uh, zinc and oxygen, which is the case for other uh, structure. And this smaller peak, that's due to the second solvation shell. If there's TFSI in the uh, solvation uh, structure, we should see some signal for, uh, for example, the sulfur or something. So when we do the fitting, both models kind of uh, give similar uh, comparison in terms of the uh, agreement with permits. But uh, six water model is better. So here, based on these uh, uh, further experiments, we can kind of confirm that six water model uh, coordinate to zinc is uh, the real picture. So uh, we are still uh, still uh, trying to understand more about this behavior because if this is the case, uh, why water is stable in the uh, liquid phase? So that's uh, still undergoing. So uh, just to summarize uh, everything I uh, mentioned today. So we studied this, uh, we focused on this lithium cast uh, water uh, in salt electrolytes. 
At low concentration, we see this uh, water uh, 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 network, high concentration that's replaced by a homogeneous capacite water uh, network. And water and lithium is kind of distributed in there, uh, in the frame. Then for the dynamics, it's really a hawking uh, mechanism instead of uh, the equaler suggested uh, by previous studies. And then when we add uh, zinc into this uh, solution, uh, the lithium uh, capsaic water uh, structure doesn't really change much. But it's interesting that uh, zinc is coordinated by water only, even at high concentration. And this structure is super stable. Uh, so that the uh, conduction magnesium for zinc is totally re-equaler. So this structure doesn't really change during our simulation, like a 100 nanosecond. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, thank the uh, group, the Mabin group. Since I joined uh, Notre Dame uh, about 10 years ago, I have been part of this group. It's a really great group, and I met so many uh, great people. I really enjoy uh, working here. And again, uh, the study was supported by GSC, which is supported by uh, the US Department of Energy. And here I listed a few uh, experimental uh, collaborators. So the X ray uh, kind of stuff, uh, scattering absorption were uh, carried out by Michael uh, McToney. He was at Slack uh, National Lab, uh, moved to uh, Colorado was last year, I believe. And the IR, FDIR stuff was by uh, this group in the uh, University of Chicago. And thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to uh, take uh, questions or comments. Professor Yongzhang, thank you so much for the presentation. We are now open to questions. If you want to ask one, please enable your microphone or write it down in the chat and we will read it. Also, our YouTube viewers can write it down, of course. Let I ask the first one. I, I, I have no exact request, but just doubt. Uh, uh, what the, the, the water model for this old day study was ESPC, yeah? Uh, it's SPC FW. It's a flexible water model. Uh, yeah, it was developed uh, by a Greg Walsh group uh, some years ago. Why did you choose this uh, this model? Uh, because the uh, diffusivity uh, or, or other reason? And how yeah, is the hydrophobicity uh, contribution for this uh, water model? I mean, uh, yeah, do you have a kind of organic uh, hydrophobic part of these ions and maybe and that's an uh, important uh, point. Uh, I'm sorry, what's the, uh, what's the last question? Oh, no, and then, then my question is generally, is, uh, why yeah, did yeah, you choose this? Common, yeah. Yeah. yeah, when we chose this model, we didn't really know uh, there's this small problem for diffusivity. We were trying to use the flexible uh, model so it's easier in the simulation and that's consistent with our uh, Capsize other uh, species in the liquid phase. And the model is, is pretty good for many uh, properties. Then, uh, even for this, uh, the, this problem in diffusivity, or the, they, they didn't consider the uh, finite size uh, correction. I didn't check other models, the popular models like uh, tip 3P, tip 4P. But I assume that might be the same problem for uh, these like, older models. I think people start to realize this uh, finite size uh, uh, effect. Well, the first paper people mentioned that it was a long time ago, but people didn't realize that it didn't really do anything until recent years, I think. So I guess even we uh, try a different model, uh, it won't really change the, the simulation detail that much. And also on the other hand, uh, as you can see, we kind of focus on the high concentration and overall we can capture the, the trend pretty well. So 
so far is good, I guess. But in the future, if we really want to have some quantitative uh, comparison or results, we may have to consider a, a better model or yeah, some even polarizable model or something. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The results are very nice. Uh, maybe only uh, at low concentration uh, of uh, uh, electrolytes, maybe it's the deviations increase a little bit, but I think that the, they're very nice uh, comparison that you did if with uh, X-rays. Uh, uh, I just want uh, at, at the beginning to show on, on this picture uh, as well. Uh, at, at very high concentration, the concentration number uh, uh, is about two for water, mm -hmm. water molecule. So I expect some kind of uh, channel or linear uh, fluid or so one dimensional fluid mm -hmm. that, that's compatible with uh, coordination two. Uh, uh, but yeah. it's not the case. It's, it's, it's because uh, we have very small clusters on the uh, on the the immediate the, the contact uh, is only in two molecules. That's 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 very strange for me. I expect something like a chain. No, I won't mention. All yeah. That. Yeah. We checked uh, the the simulation trajectory. We kind of see chain is. Yeah, as you said, chain is not really linear. It doesn't have to be uh, like a linear structure. Yeah, you know, sure. Water uh, has an angle, so the uh, the hydrogen bond can uh, have like all different uh, structures. Yeah, that's that's right. Thank you. Very nice results. Yeah, thank you. Um, Professor Zhang. Professor Richard has asked a question in this chat. Uh, he asked, have you characterized the self-diffusivity of the zinc water cage? Can you characterize its stability in nanoseconds or minutes? Okay. Uh, I have the results uh, for the, the resonance time between uh, zinc and uh, the first salvation uh, water. Uh, right now, it's nanosecond scale for sure. I cannot say a minute or whatever because our simulation cannot reach that long. Uh, we have uh, totally, I think, 400 nanosecond simulation. And by fitting the, the uh, correlation function, we can go beyond that. But mainly, it's, that's, <clears throat> that's too much for our simulation. <laughs> It's a really long time. That's uh, it's really long compared to, uh, for example, lithium uh, salvage environment. But how long? Uh, I can't say right now. Yeah. Well, let me let me just follow up. And the, the reason I'm asking is I've been reading lately about uh, spin echo methods mm -hmm. for characterize measuring experimentally self diffusivity, but they require a certain length of time for the uh, so you mean the kind of the resolution of the technique? Yeah, can you reach that resolution? Uh, it should be, right? I don't really know the resolution for uh, different techniques. Uh, I thought LMR is kind of slow, uh, can only capture slow dynamics. But that's, I don't know, uh, like nanosecond time scale. So I, our simulation is much longer than that, I believe. Yeah, I, it struck me because I was just reading a, an article about uh, methane in water. And there was an argument in the 70s or so that, uh, that, that methane in water forms a kind of a clath rate structure. And then historically, Hildebrand came back on that and he said, well, if that's true, we should be able to measure a different diffusivity for this clath rate structure that's around the water. And then he, he looked at the self-diffusivity and he said, it's, it's, not, it's nothing, nowhere near what it would be if you had this kind of a long-term structure around the methane. And so he sort of 
poo pooed the hydrophobic effect and it led to a lot of controversy. And it was interesting history, but tangentially related. Okay. Yeah, I'm not aware of this uh, word. Uh, but I think for this case, for the zinc case, uh, the resolution in experiments uh, should be enough to detect the behavior. Because this, I think this is slow dynamics relative to uh, those techniques. That, that's my understanding, uh, but I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Okay, that'd be great if, if yeah, if you could like demonstrate it with experimental measurements. I think that'd be super. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So any further questions? Okay, so our time is almost over, guys, and I want to thank you, everyone, for the discussion. And once again, thank you, Professor Yong Zong, for the amazing presentation. Thank you.